Hello everyone, I'm Sam Ford. Earlier this month in our 7 Inside Reports, I took a personal journey to look at a largely unknown chapter of black history when my ancestors and thousands of other blacks were slaves, not of the whites, but of the Indians. Well, a lot of people responded who'd missed some of the segments and who wanted to know more about the subject. So today you'll see it all and more and get your pencils. At the end, we'll have not a test, but an address and phone number where you can get more information. Every summer at Tahlequah, Oklahoma, the Cherokee Indians sponsor their Trail of Tears pageant, the story of how the U.S. government robbed the so-called five civilized tribes of their homelands in the South and moved them by force to Oklahoma. They don't tell about the thousands of blacks the tribes brought with them, their slaves. My mammy and pappy belonged to a part Cherokee named W.P. Thompson when I was born. The woman reading is my sister, Elaine Ford Staten, but the words are those of our great-grandmother, Phyllis Thompson Pettit, whose Georgia-born parents were brought by the Cherokees over the trail. Johnson Thompson was Phyllis's brother. Before that, Pappy had been owned by three different masters. One was the rich Joe Van, who lived down at Weber's Fall, and another was Chief Lowry of uh, the Cherokees. My cousin, Maurice Shepard, reading the words of his great-grandfather. The interviews were conducted 52 years ago here at Fort Gibson, Oklahoma, when both my great-grandmother Phyllis Pettit and her brother Johnson Thompson were in their 80s, part of a federal writer's project. Now, both of them are buried in this cemetery. But after I read their words, I was set on a mission to find out how my family became slaves of the Indians. I learned that beginning with the administration of George Washington, it was the policy of the U.S. government to civilize the Indians by teaching them modern farming techniques. To adopt agricultural practices that uh, patterned uh, after the whites, and one of those in the South was slave trade. I don't ever talk about it very much because I think it's a very shameful part of, um, of Cherokee history, and so I've purposely avoided involving myself in that, um, in that whole issue. While the current chief may be ashamed, at the Cherokee Museum today are slave bills of sale, including one for three slaves bought in 1841 by then-principal chief John Ross. The chief and his brother Lewis were among the biggest slaveholders in the tribe. 